Do you have those people in life that appeal to the worst in you and not the best in you? And whenever they connect with you, they bring you down to where you were before? Who do you allow to be in your ear? What kind of relationships are you developing? Are they an asset to you or they are a liability? Do they elevate your spirits or do they tear you down? We get two types of people, nourishing people and toxic people. Nourishing people, they bring the best out of you. They encourage you, they inspire you, they hold you accountable. Toxic people, they are critical people, always telling you what you can't do. They're always measuring your possibilities based upon their failures. They don't know what's possible for you. My mother said, never let anybody tell you what you can't do, son, especially if they haven't done it. So as you begin to look at yourself, begin to identify the relationships that you communicate with most and say, hey, is this relationship helpful to me? Some of you have been giving security clearance to things and people that have no business getting near your heart. You need to learn how to guard that thing. Because if you don't guard it, stuff gets in it. And what gets in it comes out of it. That's why you have to decide that I'm going to guard this my heart. And I'm not going to let anything get security clearance. Guess what? Shame, you don't have clearance to my heart. Insecurity, you don't have clearance to my heart. Doubt, sorry, you don't have clearance. Depression, you don't belong in my heart. Loneliness, not anymore. I'm not giving you access. I'm guarding my heart so I can rebuild and become stronger. Your intake matters. What are you taking in? What are you consuming during this moment of broken heart? You need to learn to think because thinking makes you act effectively in the world. Thinking makes you win the battles you undertake. And those could be battles for good things. If you can think and speak and write, you are absolutely deadly. Nothing can get in your way. I don't care how much you murmur and complain and kick and fuss and scream and yell. When you know that God has a plan for your life, he has you tied up while you acted crazy. Tie you up while you're trying to do your own thing. Tie you up while your ambition is out of control. Tie you up while your temper is raging. Sometimes God will tie you up till the time is right. Nothing will work. Your money won't work. Your career won't work. The boyfriend will leave. The house will sell. Because when God has you tied up, he's not going to let you get away. Has there anybody in here that's ever been tied up? When I look at how my friends got loose, I thank him for tying me up. I wasn't happy about it then, but I'm glad about it now. Feelings will lead us astray. Feelings can get us into trouble. And throughout life, you're going to have plenty of opportunities to lose your temper and say things you regret. You're going to get up some mornings and feel like being depressed, feel like being impatient, feel like getting upset. See, the feelings are always going to be there. But we've got to learn how to follow wisdom and do what we know is right and not just follow our feelings around. I heard somebody say, I can feel my emotions rising but I made a decision not to get on board. Just because you can feel those emotions doesn't mean you have to get on board. And to be disciplined means to do the right thing when you feel like doing the wrong thing. When you feel like saying something that you know you shouldn't say, no, don't get on board. If things aren't going your way and you kind of feel like being discouraged, no, you've got to learn to discipline the negative feelings and keep a good attitude anyway. And somebody offends you and you feel like holding a grudge, no discipline that emotion and learn to forgive them anyway. Trying to handle heartbreak, it's so important that we understand there has to be output to our life. Listen to me, if you're broken, don't take a break. Don't let the person who didn't love you stop you from meeting the person who will love you. See, what the enemy wants to do is the enemy wants to isolate you. And the enemy wants you to find some valley and he wants you to camp out in that valley and say, nobody understands me and nobody knows how bad my heart is broken and nobody gets me and because nobody gets me, I'm gonna go and do this thing all on my own. But I have come to remind you that that is a lie from the pit of hell. That is simply a reaction. And if you're ever gonna rebuild, it's gonna require to share with one another and walk through it together.
I'm going to make it. It's possible. Your dream is possible. Say that to yourself every day. Feed your mind with words that you write and, and words that you speak to yourself. Feed your faith and your doubts will starve to death. It's possible. It's possible. Even when you have no evidence to point to, say to yourself, it's possible. There's nothing as powerful as a made up mind. It's a struggle sometimes to do that, especially when you have people around you telling you that it's not possible. And they're constantly pointing out your failures of the past, constantly reminding you of all of the things that you don't have going for you. Pain of discipline weighs ounces, but the pain of regret weighs tons. And if we live a lazy, undisciplined life, and we just give in to our feelings, and we act on these emotional impulses, we're going to make very poor choices that we regret later on. We would be much better off to just discipline ourselves right now, so that later on, we don't have to carry that heavy load of regret. I mean, how many times have we acted on our emotions and said something that we know we shouldn't say, and later on, it ends up hurting us in that relationship? How many people today act on their emotions and they get involved in a relationship outside of their marriage and later on it ends up tearing the whole family apart? Friends, the pain of discipline is minuscule compared to the pain of regret. How many marriages have ended because of social media? Your grandparents that's been married for 30, 40, 50 years did not have social media to contribute to the dysfunction of their marriage. We are growing up in a technology age where communicating and social networking has went to a whole nother stratosphere. So technically it's became even more challenging to be in a functioning, healthy marriage or relationship. How easy is it to get up in the morning when you know you're not doing all that it takes? It's not very easy at all. You can just lay there awake thinking, oh, what's a few more minutes in bed? It won't matter much anyway. Wrong. It does matter. It will matter. Now, how easy is it to get up in the morning when you're pouring it on, doing the best you can, anxious to get going, make progress toward your dreams? It's a whole different story. When you're resting to renew your reserve, it's much different than resting to avoid your day. When you're psyched up and excited for your life, when you're excited for what you've planned to accomplish for the day, it's amazing you'll wake up before the alarm clock even tries to startle you awake. Your successes fuel your ambition. Your successes give you extra energy. Your successes pave the way for more successes. It's the snowball effect. With one success, you're excited to meet another, and another, and another. And pretty soon, the disciplines that were so difficult in the beginning, the disciplines that got you going, are now part of your philosophy. How do you know when you're successful? Do you have to be a millionaire? No. All we ask of you is that you earn all you possibly can. If you earn 10,000 a year and that's the best you can do, that's enough. God and everything else will see to it that you're okay. The key is to just do the best you can. If it's 10,000 a year, wonderful. If it's 100,000 a year, wonderful. If it's a million a year, wonderful. It doesn't matter 10,000 a year or a million a year. It doesn't matter as long as you've done the best you possibly can. Earn the most you possibly can. Be the most you possibly can. And here's why. The essence of life is growth. The essence of life is growth to do the best you can. And here's what's interesting. Humans are the only life form that will do less than they possibly can. Humans are the only life form that will settle for less. Every other life form except human beings strive to its maximum capacity. How tall will a tree grow? Approximately as tall as it possibly can. You never heard of a tree growing half as high as it could. No, trees don't grow half. Trees send their roots down as deep as possible. 
stretch their limbs up as high as possible, produce every leaf possible and every fruit possible. As a matter of fact, you never heard of a human physically growing half. We keep growing until we're done. Now that's a part of life we can't control. Find out who you're associating with. If, they, if those people add something to you, if they give you something in return, or is it all just a give and take, meaning like they just take and then you give, that's a bad relationship, man. Get the negative energy out of life. These people that you're around, they're always complaining and everything else, they're taking part of your soul. You only have so much to give every single day. Why waste it on that, guys? You gotta love yourself in order to love somebody else, guys. You gotta be whole and happy with who you are if you can never help somebody else out. People say, oh, it's selfish to just care about yourself. Well, if you need, if you need some fixing and reworking, it's not selfish because you don't get yourself better and then be able to really lend a hand in, in an honest way to somebody to really help them out. I want you to ask yourself, do I love myself enough to give myself permission to go after what I want? Like, do I love myself enough to exercise this weekend? Do I love myself enough to study that extra hour? Because when you can start saying yes to loving yourself, you start to realize just how far you're able to go. And I wish people knew that the ability to succeed, it's all inside of you. It's never been hidden. It's just you love yourself enough to let it out. The best version of yourself is so beautiful and so amazing. And yes, people may not accept you all the time and they may hurt you, but I don't want you to keep that in because you were meant to be a certain type of person and there's somebody out there in this world who needs to see you for who you are. The growing of our minds, the expansion of our minds, that we can control. And that's what tends to get away from us. All life forms inherently strive to their max except human beings. Now, why wouldn't human beings strive to their maximum possibility? Here's why. Because we've been given the dignity of choice. It makes us different than alligators and trees and birds. The dignity of choice makes us different than all other life forms. And here's the choice to become part of what we could be, enough to get by, or to become all that we can be. My best advice for you is to choose the all. Earn all you can, make all the friends you can, read as many books as you can, develop as many skills as you can, see as much as possible, do as much as possible, make as much fortune as possible, give as much of it away as possible. The max, there's no life like it. I'm telling you, once I got on track, I've never looked back. Pick up the challenge, go for it. Take the best of the two easies. Take the route of, it's easy to get ahead. It's easy to do all you can. It's easy to succeed. It's easy to have financial freedom. The more you do, the more you get. So the two primary benefits of positive reinforcement are number one, to build good habits. And number two, to create more energy, to fuel your ambitions, your desires, your achievements. How can you isolate what's working for you and what isn't? How can you make sure that you are reinforcing your positive disciplines? Well, if it isn't apparent, easy to see right away. If what you're doing is happening in such small increments that you're not sure if you're on track, then you need to be writing it down. You need to keep a journal anyway. But if you really aren't sure that what you're doing is making measurable progress, you need to keep a written record. You need to write down everything that may be relevant in your day. What you did, who you saw, what you felt, how it may or may not affect you now and in the future. The best way to track your activities of the day is to write them down. The best way to track your activities of the week is to write them down. The best way to analyze your progress through the year is to have written it down. Why? So you can look back on it. Because by keeping a written record of your life, you will be more accountable. By putting into writing the action steps that you have planned, you will easily see what works and what doesn't. 
Most people just try to get through the day. Never writing anything down, never keeping track of their progress along the way. Never really knowing if they are doing all they can to reach their goals, to drive their ambition. But gifted people learn to get from the day. They don't let a day end without picking up some valuable experience, some emotional content, some idea that may positively affect their future. To get the most from a day, to learn the most from a day, you need to be able to reflect on the day. And how can you reflect on a day? Please everyone, a dream will require indirectly and what others believe about you. It's never as important as you believe about you. You know I got lot of people who believe lot of things but what you believe about you more important than what people believe about you need. To grow the only way you are going to grow is when you listen and when you learn whatever I find a place where I am starting to feel homeless when I feel maxed out of my capacity I always talk that as a sign I need to get some new advice some new guidance where I am going is not where I have been. I am gaining ground come on somebody. I am gained ground. What would your life be like if you decided to become a quarterless? You know it take course to leave most people go. Thought life not allowing themselves to a step out because they don't want to let go them don't want to be moved the courses to face uh, life is willing wing of congratulation the course to love yourself gone thought the same process and evolved that you cannot still with somebody who invited 30 years in view Restriction and equal when you got there are something only. Experience can teach you and until you pay your dues, don't run with harass when you are right. Thank you for watching, like, share and subscribe.